Do you have an idea of how you want to start? Actually, I have not a bad idea. What is it? We can go to the train station and film, like, a small dialogue there. Are you joking? After this. We'll oh. record this first and then record an intro later. Okay. Are you joking? Just pack everything up and go. Yeah, I was like... <laughs> I'll just I'll just do my regular intro, maybe. Just just as a safeguard, As a yeah? safeguard, yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Achano. We are back at it again with the reactions because something amazing just dropped. There's been a new demo that someone has made using Unreal Engine 5, a solo artist, I'm told, an independent solo artist, and apparently it's the most... the best-looking, most photorealistic thing the world has ever seen. Right, Tim? Yep. So, that's why I'm sitting on this couch about to watch a video that Tim has prepared for me that I have not seen. So we're, we're gonna embark on a journey here. Mm -hmm. Link to this will be in the description below. And, well, I don't know. I mean, to give some backstory, I've just seen a bunch of news articles like throughout the week being like, this is the best, this is the most like amazing looking Unreal Engine 5 demo the world has ever seen. And then I haven't watched it yet. As usual, I never seem to watch anything. So let's take a look. Oof. Damn, this looks like real life. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's so many things going on here. Should I, maybe, how, how long is this? Uh, two and a bit minutes. Two and a bit minutes. I don't know if I should watch this whole thing first and then talk about it, or if I should just pause now. Ah, oh, this looks so good. I genuinely did not think this was even a video game. I thought it was real life, and well, then he's going to cut. Yeah. Well, but like, yeah, it's a, not a real environment either. It's a 3D environment. Damn, this is... this is... <laughs> I like the, the cutting. <laughs> oh, are we going to see a train? Oh. This is a dynamic lighting tech demo. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you see the lights go out. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, this took a turn. Okay. Running out on Electric 5 using Lumen, no Nanite. Okay, well, yeah, no Nanite. That's. The other thing, this is not real nanite. time. This is not real time. This is not real time. Okay, because that was going to be my next question. I was going to ask if this was rendered in real time or not. It's not. not. How it... do you know if it was. But was it used. Like, why was it not real time? Um, just the image quality drops a lot. So this was rendered, it's a high-res render, around 7 se uh, frames per second. Okay. And he can run at real-time 30 to 50 FPS at 144p uh, for the daytime scene of that. Okay. Uh, and then that's on an RTX 2080. So it's not like it's like path traced or anything. It is it is kind of real. Well, yeah, 7 FPS. Yeah, uh, so it, it, that's, that's just the render thing, but... Um, okay. He runs it like if he plays the scene, it's 30 to 50 FPS on a 40 and 40 P like resolution. Okay. And then th he's running that on an what RTX. Was this, rend was this rendered like 4K or something? Uh, if he can run it at 30 to 50 FPS on a 1440p, then as if it would drop that much. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, where do we begin with this? Uh, is there anything else here? I wonder why it wasn't rendered in real time. I guess the lighting probably. The because it, there's not that much detail going on here, but everything is extremely high resolution, mm -hmm. and it's probably like super sampled, which means that it's rendered like higher and then scaled down. Mm -hmm. so that's, for example, a really good way to get rid of like the jagged lines from aliasing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I imagine that he probably at seven FPS, he probably rendered it to like an eight K or something buffer and then downsampled it. Um, yeah. Let's, okay. Let's let's talk about this. So first of all, what makes this look photorealistic because there is really not much going on here and like he's obviously done a very good job but there are a lot of key things that we can talk about as to why this looks as good as it does and I think the first thing to note is that it's filmed in portrait mode and he obviously has used some kind of manual camera so he's either like taken maybe a phone and recorded motion from it literally walking around this world or maybe like VR goggles or something like that. Um, because obviously like if you look at the way that the animation of the camera is, it's like a person filming mm -hmm. or like a person literally moving around and looking yeah. at things. So immediately if this was on a static camera, it would look worse. 
much worse. Right. It would just it wouldn't look necessarily that bad because obviously, like we know, movies cinematically are filmed in a very stable sense, right? But I think that's definitely like you know the kind of portrait mode and the shaky, lifelike, realistic camera animation is what's definitely helping this look much better. So you had it on the money with the second one. It's a VR controller. Oh, it's a used. VR controller. It's a VR controller used for motion tracking. Oh, like okay. A uh, VR like controller or a headset? I think a controller used for oh. the motion tracking of the camera. Okay. That's, so it's, so it's like he, he held it out in front of him. Think, I think so. I guess like like a phone. He, he didn't go into too much detail, but he did yeah. link a channel in the YouTube, like in, in the comment. Like, yeah. Showing how to do, okay. recreate this event. Yeah. The other thing to note is the way that the colors are. So, like, look how blown out those highlights are. Mm. Yeah? He's kind of, the expo he's exposing for this section over here, but this is just so overexposed and blown out. Yeah. That's how cameras, and especially phone cameras, work, right? If they don't have the fancy HDR, like, you know, AI, whatever, processing that they do these days. But in general, that's how cameras work. That's not how game engines work, obviously. There's no reason for this to be overexposed. Mm -hmm. Like, they could have brought that down and then the whole thing would look very unnatural but you would see all the detail yeah but the way these highlights blow out and that's probably just to do with unreal engines like post-processing or like the way their bloom kind of fits in with like well it's really just like the tone mapping at the end of the day and how they map the hdr color space into like a low dynamic range that we see here yep um, but that's definitely, that's contributing so much because you can see how, like, this looks so realistic because of it. If this was, like, the actual color of the sky and it was all in, like, HDR and you could see it all, that would also ruin this shot. And as he pans to Less the detailed. actual train station, like, it does, as a phone camera does, it adjusts yeah, pretty well. Yeah, it's got that it. adaptive yeah. exposure on it, yeah. yes. Yeah, which, exactly, which works very much the same way in engines as it does in, like, a literal camera, right? It just, like, it can, you can kind of get a, a histogram of, like, the entire scene, see what the light values are, and then try and average it and smoothly dial down the exposure Yeah. Um, to try and kind of expose for, well, either a specific point or a wide area or, you know, a region of the frame, whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, the interesting thing is, like, the geometry... So, like, he did mention some of the foliage. I don't know if this is the foliage is from Quixel Megascans and that message at the end, mm -hmm. but possibly. But everything else, like, these rocks look kind of detailed. But apart from that, if you look at um, everything else, like, everything is quite low poly. Like, not low poly in the sense that it's, like, a low poly style. But there's not, like... This isn't, like, you know, that Unreal Engine 5 demo. With Nano. <laughs> this isn't this isn't like that Unreal Engine Five demo where it it's like you know in the desert and there's all these there's billions of rocks or whatever and cliff faces yeah, and all yeah. this geometry like this is like if you look at this you know you've got walls you've got stairs you've got um, you know the train kind of station and like all of these flat surfaces uh, where the a lot of work has gone into is texture right so the texturing of these things is really quite good. Except for, I noticed one thing at the end, which I thought was a bit weird. Uh, I don't know exactly where it was. I think it was here. Yeah, look look at how clean these look. Uh. Why are these so dirty? See, like the, wa the, the walls of these things are so dirty, but this no, but is like so clean. It's a tile. It's, it's a, a tile, tile on top. It's oh, concrete. Okay. The dirty part is concrete. And that's, yeah, that's yeah, a tile but still, top. that's too clean for a that's tile. That's too clean, yeah. It's got to be a bit more scratched. textured. It's not scratched. It's not... Because it, uh, everything else is, that's the thing. Like, yeah. look, look at all the wear and tear everywhere. He's done a really good job with wear and tear, but I don't know. I don't... That kind of... When I saw that, I was kind of like, eh. But again, that's just because at this point, you know, what are you doing? Like, you're just looking at this nitpicking being like, oh, let what, me find what, something, let me find something yeah. to talk about. Because it's just such a, it's such a great it's looking so, so perfect piece of art, in really. That, yeah. And to be honest, like the so so here I'm beginning to see like this doesn't look photorealistic to me, mm -hmm. right? Maybe the way the AO is playing, I see the outlines of these rocks. Maybe, yeah. maybe they're a bit too cartoony or something. Maybe the way that the de like Lumen is bouncing or trying to within those rocks and whatever. Like if this was a ray trace shot, yeah. this would look very different, I think. So like in in that sense, it's it's kind of fall, it kind of falls apart. I think the daylight shot looks looked much better. Mm -hmm. than the night so like this shot for example don't think looks as good as that shot 
right? Okay. Like this to me looks more realistic. And to be honest, like daytime shots, daytime in general has a much easier lighting scheme, right? Because if you if you think about the light here, well, I mean, I, I don't know what like there's some interior lights, but the light is mostly just coming from the sky. It's just yeah. like you've got the directional light that you see over here. Oh, it's got motion blur as well. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, it's got oh, that's probably also why it looks kind of like it's filmed as well because you got the motion blur of like a camera and stuff. Um, but yeah, like the directional lights coming in through the windows and that's how we have our main light, right? Whereas over here, look at all these lights. They literally are responsible for lighting the whole scene. Yeah. There might be like a moonlight or something, but when I, I think when you get into this, especially when it's quote unquote real time, meaning that like this isn't ray traced over like, I don't know, several minutes or hours per frame mm -hmm. where it can actually bounce all of these lights around and figure out exactly what the image should look like. I think in these situations where you are still bound by a real-time kind of uh, budget, mm -hmm. it becomes really difficult to get a realistic image with this many lights when it's when literally the whole light contribution of the image depends on just these lights, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If there was also a skylight, then the impact of these lights would be much lower, right? Mm -hmm. But when there's not, when it's like all these lights are lighting the entire scene, they're responsible for it all, I think at that point, it, yeah, it's just... It's just difficult to make this look as realistic in real time. Yeah. I, I think that if he just switched on like Unreal Engine's Path Tracer for this shot right here, it'd probably look diff quite a bit more different, or at least more different than say this. And again, I'm just, you know, I'm just making stuff up. I have no idea. <laughs> but I, I just, I have a feeling that that's, that's what it would be like. The thing is though, right? As far as photorealism go, like, hey, distinguish this from, from like, real life, I would say, yes, it's it's easier to distinguish a night scene yeah, from real life. Yeah, yeah. But Wonder as far as, is. like, a video game production goes, I would say this is, like, this makes for much more interesting. Like, imagine playing a horror game in this. It feels close enough to photorealism where it's like, hey, this could be me walking at a train station at night, but, but also think... it's, like, kind of manageable, you know? The only problem I see with that is that I think I agree with you if it was in VR or if the camera was responsive to your actual real life movements. Okay. If you're playing with th this with a controller, uh, he did, this isn't like uh, available for download or anything. The scene, right? This is all okay. I wonder if he'll if he'll do that because that would be cool. I would I would be interested to see like a normal player controller on this because mm -hmm. again like. You know, at the end of the day, this is an amazing looking demo and I don't want to take anything away from that at all. But I'm just thinking that like, if this was in a game, if it was feasible to put this even in, into, into a game, right? Cause there's a lot of detail going on here. It's seven FPS, right? It's, this isn't really like the most real time thing in the world that you could probably actually ship, right? And it's definitely more of like a tech demo than it is, or, or just an, a piece of art really, than it is an actual game. However, if you could, bring it back into that space and you had like a normal kind of player controller with a, you know, you're playing with a controller or whatever and the camera's moving around normally and you're sprinting around the scene. Yeah. I wonder how much, how much different it would look. Cause I'm telling you like this camera shake stuff and just the way the camera moves and the motion blur and everything that adds like so much to this, mm. you know, especially at night, but just looking at stills from the daylight, that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. The way the exposure is balanced, the way this motion blur works, the way, all of this stuff is laid out. Apart from like, you know, there's no people. It feels a bit eerie because there's just nothing going You're on. Alone, yeah. You know what I mean? Which, you know, I, I don't know what this person's intentions were. Maybe they were to make just, maybe this is just a work of art that I, happens to look photorealistic. That's, that's what he does. He goes for yeah. as much photorealism as okay. possible and makes different demos, different right. moments. So he has a couple. Well, that's what I mean. Kind of like, maybe like he, he was like, I want to just make it look good but i want it to be eerie and alone and that's kind of the the mm -hmm. message behind the artwork or whatever versus like you know because if this I, I think if the the biggest thing that's weird about this is almost like that there's just no people anyway mm -hmm. you know and so that also in a way subtracts from the realism because how often are you in a train station during the middle of the day that's like the that thing. that's like that you know what i you know? get looking at this this is like a ghost town train station. Cause think about it. Those yeah. YouTubers don't have a lot of narrative. A lot of time it is the, literally the sounds that you're listening to right now. And this is, by the way, this is based like the artist is in Japan 
and it's based on a train station in Tokyo. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, this this watching this feels like this is a ghost town, and you're walking at a train station in a ghost town. Yeah. Because like I like watching those videos that like abandoned like shelters or whatever, and he's just there is yeah, no dialogue. Yeah, yeah, really. yeah. You're just I guess that gives me this vibe. Just ambient noise yeah. and sounds and stuff like that. No, it's it's really really nice. I'm assuming this lighting is dynamic. Like for all of these shots, I'm not sure if it yeah, actually is. Yeah, it is. Nothing's he, baked he or anything. He can play this. Yeah. He can play this. Yeah. No, no, no. I know, I know, but like dynamic. I just mean dynamic in the sense that the lights, the light isn't moving. Ah. Uh, yeah. And that he's not. He hasn't baked anything. I don't. I don't. Is but 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 he, but he did say it was Lumen, and I I miss like Lumen obviously. I'm sad that that train never came. I was looking forward to seeing the train. Hmm. Because that's the other thing, right? This is... The other interesting thing about this is this is fully static, right? The entire The only moment. thing that isn't is when he's moving the flashlight around. That's the only thing that gives you any sense of movement apart from the camera. Because, like, obviously, shadows move as yeah. well as just yeah, yeah. the camera mm -hmm. when you've got this right here. Yeah, it's just mostly... Again, mostly, like, you know, things that make this photorealistic. Number one, camera... And camera, not just animation, but the way that the exposure plays mm -hmm. with the camera as well, and the way it's exposed and all that stuff, very realistic. Number two, just the, the texture detail is fantastic. Maybe number two tied texture detail and actual lighting, mm -hmm. right? Because the lighting, you know, lumen and all of that stuff, just the way the light's calculated is obviously very, very, very good. And then, yeah, like the 3D models are like, whatever. It's probably the last because they're not that... Well, yeah, detailed. even he says, like, um, for this project, I wanted to get as close as photorealism as possible. Um, where was it? Ah, uh, yeah, but I didn't use Nano. So models are created using the standard low-poly workflow. Yeah, well, you, you don't need Nanite for this. But the, the cool know? thing about this, though, Jan, it was done in a month by a single person in a month. Who, who did all the texturing oh. by scratch, from scratch in Painter. I think he in means painter. substance. Substance. Oh, in substance painter. painter. I yep. think. I think that's what he means. He just said Damn. Which kind of like, like all the models, all the reference footage. Yeah, yeah. Building this scene, you know, in a month by a single person. No, that's nuts. And then to get it to this kind yeah. of like level of quality. That's yeah. That's a great job. How long until you do this in Hazel? In a month. In a month. You've got a month. In a month. <laughs> you start now. <laughs> you start now. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you still here? <laughs> you should be working. <laughs> Would Hazel do this though? Um, I guess there's no reason why. You can't, well, but... look, like we we would obviously need to have better rendering. <laughs> like we would need better light, a, a better lighting engine. Okay. Um, that'd be the the biggest part. <laughs> but like, there's no reason why obviously these models and textures wouldn't work in yeah. Hazel. They just wouldn't look as good because. Of um, well, yeah, because, you know, this is probably using, well, Lumen, which uses, like, ray tracing mm -hmm. to an extent to get better global illumination, like, just indirect lighting, which we don't have indirect lighting at all. Yeah. Right? So, therefore, of course, if we just chucked this into Hazel, it would look not very good. <laughs> we, might, we might cut this part out of the video. <laughs> but there's no reason why we couldn't, like, eventually get something like this working. Yeah. Because, again, I don't see anything, like literally impossible going on here mm -hmm. like if we had all the source assets and everything yeah we could get some i think if i sat down and did nothing for the next two to three months i could probably build all the tech for this kind of thing and i'm not saying it would look the same or as good but it would be 90 percent of the way there okay wow that's kind of crazy. But too bad I have other stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this little look at this amazing demo. What did you guys think? Leave a comment below. I do actually have another channel where I do reactions kind of like this, but more on like games and all of that. It's called More Cherno. There'll be a link to it in the description below. So if you want to see more reactions, take a look at that channel. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.